Hello everyone and welcome to Red Runner. As you might have been able to, um, let me try this again. Hello everyone and welcome to Red Runner. As you might have been able to guess, this is an endless runner game. But it has a few things going for it that other runner games don't. Uh, first of all, this is the only runner game I'm aware of where you can move backwards. And that's generally because the game's platforming is momentum focused, and if you don't have enough momentum, you're just screwed. So you can go back and make sure you have adequate momentum to clear your jumps. And some jumps require precise timing, such as this one. The title character, I'm going to assume his name is Red, is very weighty, and momentum plays a huge factor in his jump arc. He starts off slow and gets faster and faster the more he runs. And generally, you want to keep as much momentum as possible while you're on flat ground. Sometimes you'll have to slow down, but there are some obstacles you can only clear with the right amount of momentum. Like this. And sometimes you can't react in time if your momentum isn't already high enough, and you'll just end up plowing into death. There's a fair mix of moments where you need to already have momentum built up, and moments where you need to slow down and stop your momentum so that way you can platform more carefully. I feel like the game is good about switching between the two in an organic fashion. Now, um, like most Endless Runner games, the hazards you encounter in this game are in a randomized order. But the hazard layouts themselves are not randomized. I feel like the game's platforming is so precise it would be very difficult to make entirely randomized obstacles, so... Instead, what you have are several hazard layouts, and uh, the layouts orders are randomized. For example, this isn't the last time we're going to be seeing this particular hazard, where we jump back and forth while avoiding this buzzsaw. But most of the hazard layouts have multiple pathways. For example, we're going to take the lower path this time, and the lower path has a chest. The only chest uh, available in Red Runner is on this pathway, as far as I know. But, um... Something that makes the hazard layouts more enjoyable on repeat runs is that many of the hazard layouts have multiple pathways. So, you know, if you're tired of seeing the same hazard layout over and over, you can go a different way around this time. Or you can just keep going the way you're familiar with, you know, whatever. Um, something very important about Red is that while he jumps, he tucks his legs inward, which makes it a lot easier to land on them. Um, this time we're taking the upper pathway instead of the lower one. There's no benefit to taking the upper pathway, but I wanted to show you it was there. Anyway, Red tucks his legs in when he jumps, which is really important to landing on platforms while you don't have a lot of momentum. When I first played this game, a lot of the jumps were really scary, because uh, the character, as I said, is super heavy. And it seemed like the platforming was really tight for such a heavy character. But as soon as I learned it's all about, uh, it's all about speed and momentum, it was fine. He is heavy, but you just... He is heavy, but you just gotta get to the right speed to throw his, rate, uh, his weight around properly. That's basically the core design concept behind Red Runner, as far as I can tell. And being able to precisely maneuver such a heavy character around feels very satisfying, especially the big weighty thud and step noises that accompany him. Um, I've played the game a lot more uh, than this, but uh, the versions of this game I played were asset flips instead of the original game itself. And the first asset flip of this game I played, which was called Forgotten Adventure, I think? That was my fault entirely. I mistimed that horribly. Anyway, the first asset flip of this game I played, Forgotten Adventure, um, I believe my high score is like 300 meters or something like that, but that game added a mechanic that breaks the game design. Um, you see, in the r version of Red Runner we were playing, the original version, you can't spend the coins on anything, but in uh, Forgotten Adventure, the asset flip of Red Runner I was playing, you could spend the coins to speed your character up, which really messed with the platforming design. And I was kind of wondering why it messed with it so bad. And then I found out it's because that's not how the game was originally made. But um, as someone who's a big fan of Endless Runner platformers like this, I really like this game. Um, I like it a bit more than Spirit Run Fire and Ice, which is also up on the channel. But it gives me a similar feeling to that. 
in the way that the obstacles aren't entirely randomized, but instead there are several layouts of obstacles, and they appear in a random order. This game is definitely better than Spirit Run. Um, it doesn't have, like, a, a really gripping gimmick like Spirit Run does. The gimmick in this one is just the character is super heavy. But this one controls a, a lot better. And the platform in here is super satisfying because of the added weight. You may have noticed that, you know, sometimes I do a roll, often roll in the air or on the ground. That doesn't seem to do anything to the game. It just seems to be there because, you know, why not put in a roll button, I guess. It doesn't seem to affect um, Red's momentum any. It doesn't seem to affect his jump arc any or anything like that. It just seems to be there just because... We could have made this jump right here if we had more momentum, but we didn't. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. But, um, yeah, I quite like this game. It's very simple. Um, it is free. You can choose to pay what you want for it if, um, if you do want to give them money. But it is free to download, and it's also open source. You can use any of the code and any of the characters and any of the assets for anything you want. The only, um... The only, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The only condition to using the software is that you make sure other people are aware of the license. The developers of this game don't even ask for credit or anything. They just want you to make sure other people also know they can use these software, th this software and these assets for anything they want to. That's the only condition in the licensing agreement, which I think is pretty fair. The asset flips I, I played didn't agree with that, but, um, you know, what are you going to do about it? Now, I'm um, back to this game. It's probably not going to last you that long after you see and conquer all of the hazards and get a score that you're happy with. That's probably going to be it for you. And, um, I have seen all the ha- I keep timing that wrong. I know how to time it, and I time it wrong every time. Anyway, um... This game, after you see all the hazard layouts and you get a score you're happy with, that's probably going to be it for you. Um, in total, I think I've played the game about two hours counting the asset flip version. But that's time I would have spent playing this version if I knew this version existed. So, um, I've probably played enough of Red Runner for a long, long while. I like runner type games, but I've seen all the, um, all the hazard layouts, I've conquered all the hazard layouts, and... Um, I'm comfortable with stopping it, but I wanted to share this game because even though it's really simple and minimalist and there's not music or anything, I feel like the momentum-based platforming is done really well, and it's one of the rare cases I think you can see how heavy the character looks and how much momentum plays a factor into what you do. There is one final hazard I really, really want... Sorry, hazard... La there's... There's one more obstacle I want you guys to see before we stop though so I'm gonna try and get that before we're done but I'm um, after that I'm gonna call the video these thwomp knockoffs are really loud uh oh here it is here's the final obstacle I wanted to share this buzzsaw chases you and you have to jump over the platforms in your way just perfectly because the buzzsaw gets faster and faster as it chases you, and you just can't go fast enough to escape it unless you jump over the platforms in just the right way. It'll catch up and clip you in the butt. Just when you think you're safe. You know, um, it's kind of it's kind of dreadful. See, look, that was really close, and we did that nearly perfectly. Anyway, um, that's Red Runner, and that's about all I wanted to share, because that's pretty much all there is to the game.